then was at No Fear, did a lot of stuff there, actually put together a, a manufacturer deal and, and started making some serious money. I mean, we went for, I went from making like 50 grand a year to $45,000 a month. Have you heard how, how Jason's doing? Like, is he, is he doing, doing good? Yeah, you there see? you go. <laughs> That's so sick. I got flamed online for reading a DM from from J Law saying that uh, he I, was coming I knew back it, to. I knew it was going. That's to ride I knew it was a gas going. gas armor energy. Um, you were putting together a deal. How close was was that from from happening? What was the what what actually happened there? Because I I never I never chase it up. I landed as Carlsbad and then was at No Fear, did a lot of stuff there, actually put together a, a manufacturer deal. Um, a gentleman I met while I was at AXO, I became a sweatshirt manufacturer partner with a gentleman in Beijing. Um, and then I became partner with him and then we manufactured all the sweatshirts for No Fear. And then we started manufacturing them for uh, the Gap, Tommy Hilfiger, uh, the, the company that he, this gentleman, um, BMR, James Wynn, um, and uh, then one of my other partners, Steve Zamoris, who's a partner with me now to this day in Arma. Um, we had put together, uh, not only was I a designer, but then I became a manufacturer partner of all of the uh, sweatshirts at No Fear. And I mean, that company went from zero to $150 million in seven years. Uh, in sales and you know back in the early 90s I mean that's that was quite significant so yeah yeah so with that all and then I started making some money and you know and and then I put together a whole liquidation of all the overstock of my sweatshirts and all the other uh, vendors and and it started making some serious money I mean we went for I went from making like 50 grand a year to forty five thousand dollars a month when i put together this manufacturing deal and then this liquidation pro so then that's when i invested also then in spy and then the the the, 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 the no fear thing with my partners actually i sold out sold my deal out to the the gentleman james Wynn, invested in spy and then they needed somebody over at spy they were like hey you're a good salesperson we need somebody to look after sales i didn't initially come in there as the sales manager but when i went in and started lighting it up i it became a sales manager within like i think literally four to six months and then was sales manager then director of business development and my role changed here and there but was involved in everything from a to z until we exited it and went public in 2003 so so yeah man pretty, it's a <laughs> it's a crazy story like you've you've been involved in some of the most like iconic brands in the sport and iconic deals in the sport to, to go back to that no fear deal what is what does that deal look like to keep you in california like how much money or how much like what, what did well, they offer that then i mean at that time there? i mean yeah, at that time i mean i was i was pretty uh i mean lower level so so they went from you know no fear went from you know selling like the bad boy club type shorts you know because bad boy club life's a beach was mark and brian simo and beaver theodosakis who are still my very good friends to this day um when they started no fear it was t-shirts t-shirt graphics you know pretty simple shorts you know drawstring yeah. pull-up shorts but they started they grew quickly and they wanted to really transition into more clothes you know I, want, I don't want to say fashion but you know other than just baggy pull up drawstring shorts and t-shirts which they were selling you know a million t-shirts a month I mean the thing exploded but they really wanted to get into what I was all about was all that detail you know the 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 you know the denim with cool tack buttons and and logos yeah, and actual and manufacturing Actually, yeah, qual you know, clothing versus just a t-shirt and some shorts and board shorts and trunks. It was clothing. So, you know, then I, that's where I came in. And then especially even with the sweatshirt manufacturer, which I even brought him to a whole nother level. And, you know, I was, tra I was traveling, our factory was in Ningbo, China. Um, so I was going over there. I, I elevated his entire, uh, manufacturing because I'm so into the detail and so into the fine detail, which <laughs> I was telling my uh, 21 year old son this, you know, I'm kind of driving him crazy because I'm making him do things and he's in school right now, you know, uh, I mean, super smart kid, you know, math and, you know, just going to SDSU and, you know, but he's home now for the summer and I'm like, all right, we're going to 
get some stuff done around here and you know you're going to help do some chores and you know and I'm driving him crazy but I could tell you that my dad used to drive me crazy because every Saturday I had to pull oh, everything yeah. out of the garage everything out of the garage clean it I'm like dad it's clean I just pulled everything out swept it out hosed it out last Saturday and he would make me do it and it was like up oh, you missed that corner you missed this you missed that you went mowing the lawn. Oh, you went you know on a curve where it was a 90 degree angle up. Oh, you missed, get the lawnmower out, do it right. So that attention to detail became something that, you know, to this day, you know, I tell my son, I go, my dad used to drive me crazy. I thought he was absolutely crazy, but yeah, you know, yeah. ma- every day my bed's made. I, my first thing I do every single morning is make your bed and make it as good as it possibly can be. Because if you don't do anything else, at least you did something really, really well. So yeah, that's yeah. kind of another thing I live by. But so I applied all that, which I know, you know, you're like, what does any of this have to do with clothes? Well, what it has to do with it is the attention to detail. And I believe that that's also what in building a good brand is that attention to detail. Um, you know, Mark Hall always used to, uh, you know, commend me because, um, you know, when the guys are on the podium and you'd give them a monster can, you know, the can doesn't always print to where the pore space is, where the logo yeah. is going to show. You have to go through the cases to get the one that's going to pour exactly when the guy's drinking it to where the logo is visible, where you're not seeing the, the ingredient panel on the back of the can. And there was one time we were at uh, Glen Helen. Grant Langston was about to clinch the championship in 2007. Yeah, Rodney Sachs, the CEO of monsters there mark hall's there there's a bunch of people from monster there and i and i had uh wes at the time was the my motorhome driver um i had him doing the podium uh deal well i could see that as he was getting ready to hand grant the can it was a right-handed can poor versus grant who was left-handed and i jumped over the fence i ripped through the cases of monster i grabbed the one that's going to be as he's you know, being interviewed and pouring it, it was the right one. And that's where even Mark said to me, he's like, that's what I love about you, Hollywood. And yeah. even always making sure it was iced inside the barrel at our whole setup was don't read. If Mark came by, you'd see him reach in there and make sure that those were cold monsters in there, not warm ones. So those little things that a lot of people don't, you know, this all sounds like what? It's so trivial. No, nah, no, nah, I get it. I get it. I get it. It's or even super. this. Uh, Another good one was is my now 86 year old mother. I think this was 2006. We had the motor home at High Point, the trailer, and our whole setup monster. You know, it wasn't what it is today, but it was it was still very impressive. Our whole setup, and um, you know, and at the time, you know, I had these girls from Canada, um, uh, still great friends of mine. Um, the Monster Girls, the beginnings of the Monster Girls, and I remember my mother. They're there handing out samples to all the people walking by, the fans. And here's my mom at the time, you know, now 86. So that was what, uh, many years ago. You know, she's there, came to the event because it's at High Point. You know, it's like 35 minutes from my house. So they came down to see what their son's a part of. And I'll never forget, my mom was getting up. Oh, let me go help those girls and go and and handing out drinks to the fans. Uh, I'm I'm like, mom, 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 sit down. Honey, those girls, they need help, mom. You know, sit down. Now, she didn't realize why I was telling her to sit down, but it's all in the delivery of who's handing you the product, who it's that, you know, the aspirational lifestyle. So do I want some, you know, well, she would have been, what, 76 years old at the time or whatever, you know, handing me that drink? Or do I want, you know, Lana or Christina or Val, who are these you know, beautiful Canadian girls handing me that beverage versus, you know, so, so, so again, it's that attention to detail that I really strive to ensure that, you know, it's perfect. And, you know, hence back to the project I'm a part of with the uh, Arma, you know, it's always about ensuring that, you know, it's perfect. It's the best it can be and always providing that in everything you do. We're excited to announce the launch of our new membership site, gypsytales.com, packed with exclusive content and perks that you won't find anywhere else. This is your chance to become a part of the Gypsy Gang. And as a special bonus, if you sign up to an annual membership, you'll be entered into the draw to win our custom-built TC125 Gypsy Gang.